I want to do just one more example. It's not listed above, but I think it's a, a good one to look at. So let's do the integral from negative 1 to 2 of 1 over x squared dx. What is this integral? Okay, so we're so used to doing integrals by now, we just sort of, you know, plot along and, and just do it. So the antiderivative of 1 over x squared, that's negative 1 over x, that's the function whose derivative is 1 over x squared. We go from negative 1 to 2, we pop these values in, so that's negative 1 half minus negative 1 over negative 1, so that's negative 1 half minus 1 or negative 3 halves. So there's our answer. Hmm. Something doesn't seem right here. Could this be right? Well, what's my objection here? Well, let's see. Let's sketch the graph of this. 1 over 1 plus, oh, sorry, 1 over x squared looks something like this. We're integrating from negative 1 out to 2. So the integral represents the area of this region here. Well, that region's above the x-axis. It should be of positive area, um, possibly infinite area, but it should be positive nonetheless, and yet our integral comes out with a negative 3 halves. Something's definitely wrong here. What's wrong? Well, what's wrong is everything I've written in red is incorrect. The very first step is incorrect. We, so the answer is no. Could this be right? No. It is incorrect. Why? We can only apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to continuous functions. To continuous functions on the interval. And let's look back at the statement of the fundamental theorem of calculus. F has to be continuous. F has to be continuous. In our example, F's not continuous at zero. That's a problem. We can't just go ahead and apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. Why can't we go ahead and apply the fundamental theorem of calculus in those cases? Well, it doesn't apply. And here's an example that shows you exactly why it doesn't apply, because it leads to a wrong answer, something that couldn't possibly make sense, because the area is not negative. So we have to be really careful when we're doing these integrals that we make sure that the function, or that the integrand is continuous on the interval in question. It is continuous on the interval in question. And then we can go ahead and use the antiderivative to go ahead and work out the integral.